Mike Kilgore from Channelytics. So Mike, if you'd like to address the group. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, here at Chainlytics, and literally here, as we are an Atlanta-based company, uh, offices all over the world, but majority of our employees are here in Atlanta, uh, we have the privilege of working with a, a number of the world's leading manufacturers, uh, distributors, retailers, uh, both in a consulting capacity from an analytics and advisory perspective, but also we have the privilege of managing a couple of consortiums um, where companies give us transaction data in order for us to generate benchmarks and, and market insights. And uh, the first of those is our Freight Market Intelligence Consortium, uh, where we really focus on the dynamics of the, the truckload, LTL, um, intermodal, and, and ocean freight markets. And, and more recently, our Sales and Operations Variability Consortium, where we focus on uh, demand variability and, and forecast accuracy. So from these interactions with, with many of, of these companies, we have the opportunity to generate a lot of um, insights into the trends and challenges that they're facing. Um, and I thought today that you know, it was timely and relevant to, to just discuss um, three of these, if it will forward, maybe manually forward. All right, we, we, well, we have skipped uh, a slide here, but uh, so the, the first trend was really uh, managing increasing complexity or measuring uh, the impact of complexity on supply chains. And, you know, it, it is timely, especially as the gentleman from, uh, from Carter's uh, demonstrated the, the complexity that, that they're faced with. But when we talk about complexity, we're really talking about kind of the fragmentation and elongation of, of supply chains and uh, in that supply chain volumes are are flowing through um, you know, more and more channels, uh, being divided across more and more items or SKUs, uh, flowing longer distances and, and across more borders. And really the elongation or, uh, or the stretching of the supply chain is, is much easier to measure. But what's difficult to measure is the, um, the impact of fragmenting supply chain volumes across more products, across more channels. We talk about omni-channel uh, and, and the, the pressure that that's creating. Uh, so really what we're seeing is an increased number of SKUs, shortened product life cycles. Uh, the product portfolio is exploding, and, and that's because innovation and new product introduction is outpacing the, uh, the retirement of, of old items and SKUs, as well as we're seeing more channel and market-specific items, and we're seeing a lot more seasonal and promotional volume as well. And, and the result of that is that we, we end up with increased variability, and it undermines the economies of scale in the, in the supply chain. And the challenge, it isn't that it's necessarily a bad thing from a competitive differentiation and from a, a marketing perspective. The challenge is that as supply chain professionals, we have difficulty in really measuring the impact on cost and service of all of that, that complexity and that increased variability and communicating that back to the marketing and the commercial side of the organization. You know, the second trend that, that we're looking at is really within transportation, freight transportation. Uh, and, and, and trucking in particular being our primary mode of freight transportation in North America, uh, what, we're, what we're starting to see and what we're going to, to see continue is kind of the transposing of the two major cost drivers being fuel and labor. And you know, prior to uh, 2007, 2008, really labor was, uh, was higher on the list in trucking uh, in terms of the magnitude of cost um, over fuel. Uh, but with the spike of, of fuel, you know, that, that became the number one cost driver by a long shot. Um, but over the last 24 months, what we've seen is that fuel has really been range bound and has gone sideways. And there are a number of forces, you know, that, that we believe are going to uh, lead to that trend continuing, that, that the, the price of fuel will go sideways for many years to come. Now, if I knew that with certainty, I'd be a commodities trader and not in supply chain. But we certainly believe that that's the case due to increased vehicle um, fuel efficiency, aerodynamics on, on the vehicles, of course, the displacement of petroleum-based fuels, not just in commercial transportation, but in passenger transportation, which relieves the demand pressure and therefore will allow the prices to stabilize. But on the flip side of that, what we've seen is that driver wages have not kept pace with, in, in terms of real wage terms, with, with wages in general in the marketplace. And the, and the best leading indicator 
of, uh, of capacity and therefore carrier pricing power in the market is driver turnover. We saw it spike in 2004, 2005. Uh, it, it backed off a little bit and then we saw a lot of relief in 2009, 2010. Of course, we, we've heard a lot of noise in the market over the last maybe 36 months about tightening capacity and increasing rates and really that did not start to take hold until the last 12 months and we're seeing that start to take hold and if we look at the demographic forces as well as the labor market forces we expect to see driver turnover continue to accelerate and the, the current forecast is that over the next 10 years we're going to have a, a, a driver shortage of approximately 230,000 drivers uh, by 2022. And really the only way to relieve that, it's not that there aren't enough people to drive trucks, it's that they're not paid enough. And the only way to relieve that is to increase driver wages and therefore that's going to drive costs up. And the third trend that, that we're really looking at is uh, leveraging horizontal collaboration. And this is a little bit longer term. Uh, I wouldn't say it's pie in the sky because there is some of this occurring, but if we look at the, the forces of complex, complexity, if we look at the forces of increasing transportation costs and many of the other cost and service pressures in the supply chain, uh, there's been a lot of work on collaboration over the last decade, but that was primarily between customers and suppliers, and it was really focused on sharing more information and sharing it earlier in the planning and execution cycle, so between trading partners. But what we're seeing now is a focus on kind of peer-to-peer, many-to-many peer-to-peer collaboration where peer companies in an industry can share logistics capacity both from a transportation and warehousing perspective in order to uh, create economies and improve load factors uh, and, and really drive smaller, more frequent shipments. But th there's a real challenge here associated with the fact that in the customers, in the buying cycle as well as in the selling cycle, the incentives, the organization, the processes, the systems are really all geared towards building full loads. And so there's a, there are major hurdles to make, make this happen, but we really believe that, that there's a lot of opportunity here. And we're currently running a pilot with about 15 manufacturers and retailers sponsored by the Consumer Goods Forum and the Grocery Manufacturers of America that is specifically focused on proving out in detail the business case for horizontal, many to many horizontal collaboration, as well as kind of identifying in more granularity what those barriers to execution are. And, and you know, we're very excited about the potential as, as well as the participants are. And we believe that it, that it really has the opportunity to unlock a lot of uh, value creation in the supply chain. So, thank you.